Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about Blood Rage, which to me is like a Thanksgiving slasher film because it does take place for most part on Thanksgiving. And I, I was just looking for a fun um, holiday themed movie to watch as it is Thanksgiving today. So the film opens up with a uh, two twin brothers in the back of their mom's station wagon or her gentleman friend's station wagon. They ended up leaving because mom starts making out with her date and I guess that's unsettling, I, I suppose. So they're just kind of creeping and prowling around the lot for the drive-in theater, which they're parked at, and people are just making out and doing things you do. It's 1987 in a drive-in movie theater lot. And one of them finds a hatchet, which he then decides to bury into some random guy's face several times. Just, I think you're supposed to assume that he's somehow triggered by seeing his mom fool around with a guy. And the lady he was with, the, the guy with the hatchet in his face, proceeds to run off, leaving just him and his twin brother. So, of course, he shoves the hatchet in his twin brother's hands, wipes some blood on his face, and then is like, oh my god, what did you do? Why would you do that? Starts screaming for his mom, who comes, and then everyone assumes, you know, it was poor Todd that did it, not Terry. Todd gets put away in a psychiatric institution for, it's now 10 years later. His mom goes to visit him, and it's the first time she's actually come to visit him. She brings him a piece of pumpkin pie since it's Thanksgiving. And the doctor then informs her like, hey, I think something is a little um, off here because now he's starting to remember things. And he remembers that it, it wasn't him. It wasn't him that did this crazy random murder. To which the mom is obviously not very receptive to this information. And there's a, just a very tense moment between all three of them in the room. So... She goes home. He somehow escapes from the hospital and is on his way to the apartment complex that the mom and Terry live at. Also, the mom is now engaged to the manager of the apartment complex, and they're all trying to have a nice Thanksgiving dinner. They get a phone call. Hey, Todd's on his way. Uh, I, I guess get another plate out. No, just be careful because he, he's kind of pissed because he's suddenly remembered that, hey, uh, he didn't do those murders. It was homeboy who's been free the entire time. And you get this distinct vibe off of Terry. Even, like, I think if you didn't know that he set his brother up for murder, like, there's something off about this guy. He's just... There's something off about him. And it's not the fact that he doesn't drink, because we don't drink either, but he's just so weird about it. He's just like, oh, I don't do that. And he doesn't seem to be um, interested in the romantic advances of his lady friend, Andrea, which also that's not that weird either, but there's just something strange about him. And uh, I will leave it off here as it is spoiler free. I don't really want to ruin this gem for anyone. I don't know if I use that term sarcastically or not, but what did I like about this film? There are very intricate special effect scenes that are just like they're set up for you to really enjoy the practical effect. And I was very appreciative of that. This is the 80s. This is the heyday of, you know, practical effects. So yes, I love that. More of that, please. Um, mm, I like that it's, it's a horror movie that's set on Thanksgiving that doesn't necessarily involve anything about Thanksgiving other than it just happens to be that day. Because I love, like, Thanks Killing. Thanks Killing's amazing. We just watched uh, Pilgrim, which I probably should have filmed a review for <laughs> in place of this. Because that was, like, an actually, like, that was a, a really solid movie. That was brutal. But regardless. Um, let's just go into my dislikes. They don't show the actual, like, money shot for the practical effects. There's a lot of, like, you see the the killer which is like it's obviously Terry like that's not spoiling anything Todd it's not Todd we know it's not Todd they let us know that in the very beginning of the film um you see Terry coming at someone with a machete and the person's like ah ah and then it cuts away and it cuts away to something stupid 
And then, like, 30 seconds later, it'll cut back, and the person's, like, literally halved, and the effect looks amazing, but I didn't see what led up to that, and I really wanted to see that, and that was, like, a reoccurring thing in this movie. We really didn't get to see, like, the actual action of things happening. You would just see the end of it, which the end of it looked really cool, but, like, what happened? What happened? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to me? Why would you do that to us all? We just want to enjoy the whole thing. We want that moment where you want to look away because it's gross, but like you just keep watching. And I did not get that from this. And I was really sad. There was a lot of like really random cutaway shots. You know, we know that Todd's coming, but there would just be like random shots of him just like walking like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm wearing a striped shirt. And then it would go back to like, Thanksgiving or it would go to the mom like she's she's having like a mental break you can tell she's pouring wine and dialing a rotary phone at the same time which sounds like patting your head and rubbing your stomach like that's that's a lot of coordination props but we didn't need that scene there was all like there was probably like seven different cutaways to her trying to call her fiance who let's remember he's the manager of the apartment complex that they literally live in and she's freaking out the entire time. Like, walk your happy ass over to the office if you really want to see him that bad. Like, she ends up calling... I think she ended up calling the police at one point and was like, he's not picking up his phone. And she's like, well, why, why don't you just walk down there? Like, what? Really? I, I, that bothered me a whole lot and I kept fixating on it. Because she would just be, like, real breathy in the phone. Like, why isn't he picking up and she's dialing wrong numbers? And then she's, like, degreasing the inside of the oven. And then there's, like, a shot of her sitting in front of the fridge with the door open. Just, like, eating random Thanksgiving leftovers, you know, as you do. But, like, why? Why is this in the movie? Just a lot of things could have been cut out. And we could have taken that time and shown us really good kills like really good scenes and that's very disappointing finger guns and you know it, it was odd there was like a reoccurring line which when we first heard it and he's like that's not cranberry sauce because he was you know getting blood off his shirt and licking it and Joey made a good point. He was like, that line would have been so good if someone was actually in the scene with him. And then they reused the line at one point where he's like, that's not cranberry sauce. That's not cranberry sauce. Already like 900 times. And I was like, you know what? You lost me. You lost me in that. Sorry. There's a little cat down there somewhere. Oh, you're over here. Hey. So, I this movie could have been so much better than it actually was. And I wonder if it was just the way that they edited the movie together or if the story was just bad, the pacing wasn't great, or maybe they had to cut out big chunks of them actually performing the practical effects because of ratings or budget or what. But I wish that there was like a different cut of this that had less of the stuff I was complaining about and more of the stuff that I really longed to see. I got to look into that. I think that there, there's even a cut of this with a different title that has even less of the practical effects, which why would you even want to see that? Because then you see nothing because then it's just people walking around and eating green bean casserole on the floor. I don't know. I mean, I did have a good time watching this. Some of it was really hokey. We got to see your boy, Ted Raimi, in the very beginning of the film. He just, like, was some random character who had a long, you know, coat on. And then he'd open it, and there would just be, like, all these different condoms on the inside, which is great. That would be a great Halloween costume. I love Ted Raimi so much. Uh, let's see. What would I rate this movie? It's probably like a two out of five, perhaps. I'm going to give it those two solid points just because the practical effects were so good. They were so great. I, the end of the movie was kind of meh. I thought that it was a bad decision that they used one guy to play both of the twin brothers when they were 
like in the 10 years later part, because you could definitely tell from the back it was a different person wearing a very bad wig, all shade, very bad wig. I thought that they could have done so much more had they actually had actual twins or like people that even looked similar to each other. That would have been great. Um, yeah, so two out of five solid effects. Really like the effects. I found this streaming on Tubi, which does play the whole movie. It just has like little breaks for commercials in it, which is great because short attention span, I need a little break every now and then. Um, have you seen this movie? What were your thoughts on this movie? Please let me know. How was your Thanksgiving? If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, how was your Thursday? Let me know. Um, is there actually a movie in existence that's this movie? but like actually shows everything. I would love to find it. Drop me a comment. If you did enjoy the video, please like the video. You could hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams of which we really need to do one soon. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok at Reanimator. Um, please don't forget to check out uh, my reviews on in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Also check out all of their amazing creators and content as well. And I think that's it. I haven't done an intro or an outro for that matter in quite a long time. Hope you all are doing well and staying well. See you later. Bye.